Previously, on Court of Swords, Remus awakens from his strange slumber to find himself hungry, excited, and full of life. He eats a bunch of rations, drinks a gallon of wine, and tells the party about his visit with the stranger. Yota serves the group a special sacred brew to celebrate their journey and wishes for good luck on the way to the monastery. Some days later, the party stops, hearing a terrible and familiar sound. Whatever was lurking in the jungle makes itself known by throwing a boulder at Berg, who takes a lot of damage and sets off a fight with the great giant undead. After a slog of a fight involving some evil necromantic barf, a bunch of rocks, some acrobatics, and a whole lot of difficult terrain, Berg delivers the killing blow to the giant. A perfect white lotus emerges from its collapsed chest, but before that lotus can do whatever evil thing it was going to do, Ramus sets it on fire. In the aftermath, Yota tries to learn something about the giant using his soul viewing mirror. He doesn't learn much, but Ramus wants to take a look, and after a tragically failed wisdom save, Ramus sees something his mind cannot handle and falls unconscious. The party takes Ramus's body somewhere a little safer to investigate. Yota looks at Ramus through the mirror and is stricken himself. Unable to wake Ramus, the party presses on. Nearer the monastery, our heroes find a family struggling with their giant goat in the mud. Yota, drunk out of his mind, attempts to explain to the family they mean them no harm, but instead falls on his face. Maharib and Yota have a tense moment. This is like really upsetting to Maharib. And uh -huh. the only thing that he knows will like insult Yota or piss him off is, is the next words out of his mouth. Um, and he, go, he just looks right in the eyes and says, I understand why your father believes you to be a disappointment. And he'll just like turn and start walking down the path to go to the temple. <laughs> After which Berg and Maharib, with Ramus's body in tow, leave a sobbing Yota behind, consoled by the peasants. And that is what happened on the last <laughs> episode. Because we all remembered exactly, right? We're all, we're great. <laughs> Oh, also, there's multiples of Adam now. This is beautiful. Yeah, we fired yeah. we fired Zeke, and I'll be playing Zeke and myself today. So this is interesting. He's a virus. He's gonna take me over next. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. Anyways, he's fixed. There I am. Hey. Yeah. Hi. What Hello. use is a Twitch stream, Mister Anderson, if you yeah. do not have a keyboard <laughs> with which to type? Everything broke there at the start of the show. That hasn't happened in like actually like 50 episodes. That was impressive. That was a a fun thing to occur. But we're here. We're live. We're good. We took a two-week break. We did it. We're back. Hi. Time for Hello. more D and D. We played sixteen hours of D and D in like a week, so we we were yeah. just a little. There was too much. We, we had. A and then time. right after that, I spent four days straight playing two games of role-playing games every day. So I'm just I've forgotten what real the real world is. I'm like Tom Hanks in the steam tunnel, man. I have lost touch with reality. <laughs> it's over. Yeah, let's I'm uh, gone. Let's, the real world's not. Let's start with that. There. You were at uh, UCLA teaching tabletop games or something. Yeah. What what was? Can you explain how that all came to be and what it was? Yeah. So, so UCLA, the media arts division has a, I guess it's a department. They have a, a section of the department called the game lab and the game lab is a cross disciplinary place where people can go who are interested in game design or design for games, uh, basically anything to do with games, they can go and they can take uh, courses through there and they can hang out and they can play games and they can make games and stuff. And, um, they invited me out as part of their, like they'll fly people out to do talks and to do workshops and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they flew me out, and I was there for four days, and we played, uh, like, Jesus, like ten, ten different role playing game sessions, and um, and then uh, I did a talk, and we did some some tutorials, and it was super cool. It was huh. great to just like hang out with people who are like really curious about games. And I was like, all right, cool. We're just going to talk about all these different RPGs. And what was funny for me was that, that you know, they were interested in, in tabletop and stuff, but most of them hadn't played anything beyond, like, like when I asked the, the teacher, like, okay, what games are they playing as part of their, their curriculum? Because they all got to pick a game and they split into groups and somebody ran the game and the other people play it. He was like, uh, one group is playing 5th edition, one group is playing Mouse Guard. And I was like, okay, cool. Two groups are playing 5th edition Shadowrun, and one group is playing Call of Cthulhu. And I was like, well, okay, cool. I will I will tell them about some other games that are also good for playing. And so like there was the Shadowrun groups, they the both of their GMs cornered me after a talk and they were like, We need to talk to you about Shadowrun. And I was like, Oh, oh children. Yeah. Let me help you. <laughs> Fucking Shadowrun. Bring, bring it in. 
Cause, cause they were like, it was funny. Cause I, I, I was describing, um, making a character in like a complicated system where you have this idea of what a role playing game is like, where you're like, I'm going to get to hang out with my friends and I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to like tell stories and I'm going to make a character and it's going to be super fun. And then we, we all sat down and six hours later, still nobody had any idea what we were doing. Like we had kind of made characters and I was just like, yeah, that's, that's how Shadowrun can be and a bunch of games like it. And yeah. uh, so it was really interesting talking to them about kind of their current experiences and understanding of role-playing games versus like a bunch of other games that are out there and introducing to different stuff. And yeah, it was really good and a really nice time. Huh. Uh, were those yeah. recorded at all? Were those, are those going to be up on the internet or just for those, those eyes only? No, that's right. It was just, it was just for, it was for the thing. The, um, the talk that I did on Monday uh, was like open to the public, but there was like a list and they only had room in the, like in the lab for like 40 people anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, all, all kind of on-site stuff, which as a person who makes content for the internet, I was like, where, where is everybody? Where's the, where are the cameras? Where's the rest of the Did you feel like the here? content was wasted because it wasn't recorded? Because I would, that's like when I play a game off stream, it's like, fuck man, I could have, there could have <laughs> been some pog emotes because that shot I just hit, it would have been, <laughs> right? man. Right? You're, you start feeling like a fucking quantum particle where you're like, am I real if I'm not being observed? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, so, yeah, sort of, to a degree. Like, a lot of it was fairly intimate in the sense that it was just, like, me and five students playing a role-playing game. So that, that stuff was pretty, like, whatever, I'm used to that. That felt more like being at a con. But the, yeah, the talk and the classes, I was like... Yeah, I'm saying I'm saying good things. It'd be cool if more than the like 30 people in this room could hear about it. But also, like I can I can reuse that content, right? It's not like I made the talk for them. Mm. Um, so I might I might do the talk again, like on my channel or or something. Cool, cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was great. Well, Max, obviously, let's talk about your college uh, lecture that you gave this past week. Uh, what was it yeah. about? How to go? And what college was it at? It was uh, at the community college nearby, uh, and it was a, it was, listen, bullshitting your way through role playing, <laughs> and then colon, who needs goals? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Like right. It. it was a class, it was a class on, uh, on perceptive uh, chronology uh, time. Is it real? Who knows? Do I care? Exactly. Not at all. That was yeah. the follow-up one that I did. Yeah. That yeah. Was the, time that was is how to make it your own. A couple days. Yeah. A couple days later. <laughs> yeah. Good. Bullshitting your way through time. What is time? <laughs> yeah, what is so it? is your is lecture? Important? No. Is, is your is your like lecture series slash upcoming book deal called bullshitting your way through and then just colon whatever? <laughs> yeah, kind of like the idiot's guide for whatever. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say it's yeah. kind of like a piggyback off of the idiot's guide. Um, whatever. I'd buy that um, book. Also, oddly enough, nobody showed up on time at that uh, lecture. So, <laughs> oh, right, of course, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, if you ever want, if you ever want a real, a real giggle, uh, try to find a copy of the the Idiot's Guide to Dungeons and Dragons because it's a book that tries to explain a thing that is already itself a book about explaining the thing that it is. So it's just like take everything in the player's handbook and dumb it down about a thousand times and try to explain like what D and D is. It's huh. it's an amazing read. Like flipping through, oh. you're just like. Wow. Okay, cool. This is as low as we could possibly get in terms of bar of entry. It's, I didn't know that was a It's thing. a weird experience. That, that's yep. like uh, yeah, similar, although I'll be at the idiot's guide stuff is a little bit more popular, but that's like finding those uh, like how to stream guides on Amazon and PDF form or whatever. I've always wanted to buy those mm -hmm. and just read them on stream, but I've never. Actually yeah. That. Yeah. I've never looked at those. I, I really, there's some, there's been some casters too that have like made books on how to cast and I'm, I would listen. Even after streaming for like a decade, <laughs> I know? still don't feel comfortable making a book saying this is how to stream. <laughs> like, I have uh -huh. I have knowledge. I you know I can be professional. I can impart some wisdom. But even then, it's like because then people like I feel like people are gonna judge you. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Also, it's a, it's a it's a big undertaking just to have people be like, oh, so you think you know how to stream? Or maybe There's maybe that's huge... not how people would take it. There's a huge difference between being able to do something and how to teach other people how to do something. Like they're completely yeah. different skill sets. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I stick to like little tidbits of advice. Like the, whole, the creator camp thing that they made for Twitch. That was perfect. I get to say my piece yeah. and you can take it for what you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I forgot it. I did that too, but I don't remember what I actually talked about. So I guess it wasn't yeah, there were a bunch of different categories. There's a bunch. Nah, but they, there was a bunch of different categories in there. I, 
there's a lot of people that participate in it. Even, but uh, every now and then someone pops in and is like, "Hey, thanks for that." I'm like, "I did do that. Great." <laughs> I think mine was on networking, and I sent them the video of just like, "Yeah, you just got to get other people to do work for you." Then I sent them that, and then they were just like, "We can't. You can't post. <laughs> we can't." That's, well, that's probably yeah. That's probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, I'll record it, put some practice or some thought into it, some actual work into it. Yeah, huh? that was good. Uh, That's funny. Oh, yeah. And then another one was about Twitter, which is so weird. I forgot I did all that. Uh, anyways, that's enough about creator camp stuff. Max, what have you been up to? I know you're playing some Haven't Apex Legends, but. I was playing some Apex Legends. Um, probably going to play some more tonight. Um, I also have an impacted ear. That's great. Super cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys don't know what that is. It means I can't hear properly Sorry, what? out of this. What? Stop what, that. Max? Stop what? <laughs> Stop that. Max. <laughs> <laughs> Look up impacted ear. It's the worst. And as somebody like me who really, really is picky and hates when audio things are just off in general, mm-hmm. having that your entire day is the worst. <laughs> oh, God. It also sucks once you can start to hear your pulse. That's the fun part about yeah. having an impacted ear is you can hear yourself breathing and chewing and it's just it's you hear things internally a lot more yeah like yeah i hate that shit so adam what is that called that sort of hearing where you hear the stuff internally there's a specific phrase for it and type of hearing because you have your ex external hearing and you guys can you guys hear this noise there's this like like, humming sound or something (laughs) like is it do i need to adjust my settings because i can hear everybody fine and there's this noise i don't i don't know it JP happens. fixes. Uh, yeah, it happens from time to time. That's also called an impacted ear, I believe, is, is what you're experiencing. So, anyways, uh, that's what I've been up to. Nice, uh, good stuff. Is there anything else? I don't know. Your background's changed since we last did Court of Swords. Thanks to that recap video, you had Christmas stuff up. That's how long it's been. I thought we did a show uh, with this in the background. We did something. Was, uh, with this we in talked the about it. We talked about it before Farverona. Right here. Ah, uh, that's what it was. So you look, Farverona. Because Farverona, everybody, everybody changed their background. You got Christmas yeah. stuff right here. Yeah, thing. take a look at it. It's it's, it's, uh, it's from Skyrim. It's one of those five piece. What? Oh, that. canvas. That's yeah. Well, you can't hear me. No, no, no. I could. Here? <laughs> I just didn't know why you were sound. Why you're fine. We understand what's happening. Can you hear me? Is this the appropriate volume? I don't know. <laughs> you should do a how to stream thing, but just scream at that level and say that you the appropriate way to be away from your mic is this far, and you have to project, you got to project your voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh-huh. name is Twitch Twitch Screamer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that's what I've been up to. I don't think anything. I got a coffee. Nice. Nice. nice little latte. Um, so you, Max, you didn't you didn't get to see this, but JP and I did a role play like the Patreon Q and A today. And one of the questions we didn't get around to asking, but one of the questions was from uh, someone named uh, Flatulent uh, Latin X. And the question was, "Do you really hate Max? Why are you so mean to him?" Yeah, and we didn't answer question. it on the Q and A, but it made me laugh really hard when I saw it. I didn't I feel like, like oh. answering that officially. I just wanted to leave it out there for people to think about, and you know. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah. That was my alt account. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I could just imagine you just sitting at your keyboard, like tears, tears. Why are you so mean to Max? Yeah. Oh, Max. God. They don't actually hate me. I don't think. No, not yeah. at all. Not even a little. <laughs> not even a little. No, no. It's Maybe it's it's all in good fun. Maybe. I would I would very much voice to them if I felt like, and have in the past uh, to other friends if I'm like, hey, yo, we good? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Anyways, Mr. Dan's Gaming, I saw you're playing some Ace Combat. As someone who's never played an Ace Combat game and is curious about an Ace Combat game, how is Ace Combat? It's really fun, but it's kind of like Just Cause where you got to like play a few hours here, a few hours there because every mission is, you know, it's dogfighting. It, it's not a lot of variety in dogfighting, uh, but it's, re- it's really fun, you know, for a couple hours here, a couple hours there if you like dogfighting games. I've heard this. It's story. really beautiful game. I've heard the story is like basically a reimagined world, but told through the eyes of anime. Can you confirm or deny? Something like that. Like the, the story <laughs> is told on from the perspective of other people that like are around you, like people that are affected by the war that's going on. Like you see their stories. It's not directly you all the time, which is kind of cool. Hmm. Okay. You're going to revisit like you see it. How- You're going to try to finish it. I'll probably go back once in a while here and there. 
it, it was all right. I, I afterwards I played Katamari uh, Demacy, and that was really fun just yeah. to roll around and collect all the junk and get bigger and bigger. Did they redo that or something? Did that get re released? Re- they re released it on PC um, oh. like about a month ago. Huh. All right. And then I have to ask because I think people in chat are probably thinking I'm going to ask uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 thumbs up, thumbs down where you sit, and we'll move on. <laughs> uh, I don't me, want Zeke to start was... playing Magic because he's next. I want him to be on the ball. So we can't. Oh, too to late, game. homie. That is too late. <laughs> that ship has sailed a long time ago. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it's mostly a thumbs up for me. Some worlds were kind of disappointing, like Pooh was only 20 minutes long. Um, and the ending was never going to satisfy everyone, but mm. it. I left more satisfied than um, than unsatisfied, I would say. Yeah. But I enjoyed it for okay. what it was. Right. I just hope they add to it um, over time with DLC and stuff. Yeah. I'm... To explain some like stuff at the end that was never explained. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. No, I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of shit where it's like, well, they figured, oh, what the fuck is this? Yeah. So yeah. I'm hoping the DLC does fix that. I hope the DLC is like, I'd be super stoked if they just introduced like a whole new world or you go back to some of those worlds and, and revisit them in, in some degree. But yeah, a whole new world. Yeah. Really, JP? Yeah, I'd be into that, too. <laughs> Let's do that. Yeah. Hey, they fucking straight up sing. Let it go. The full song, Zeke. It's in there and it's weird as shit. The entire like yeah. <laughs> Sora and them are just taking out and she's just belted fucking let it go. And your you don't just hire Adina to Mazzell shit. to just voice act. You get her to sing, too. You know? <laughs> That's true. That's true. It was it's a hell of a thing, but all those VODs are just claimed. They're just destroyed everywhere around the world. Mm-hmm. There's no use at all. So uh, we'll catch up, or at least me, I'll be giving my opinion on, on Kingdom Hearts tomorrow as well as Co. I think on, on Drop Frame. So I don't want to speak too much about it. Uh, Zeke, what have you been up to? You went now. I actually am curious. You posted, and maybe this. I'm this is probably. I'm probably going to look like an asshole saying this. You posted that you're getting a haircut. Yeah. What changed? Oh, it di- it didn't. Uh, it's not finished yet. Is the thing. Oh. Um, and also, she it kind of blended into each other. It was supposed to be like lighter on the top, and she was supposed to be dyeing the roots. Oh. So hopefully, when I go back in on Friday, the roots will be like a darker red. So it'll be like a red to orange kind of a thing. Okay. Hopefully, like a fade into that. So it's not done yet. Um, because I had to, I had to stream like immediately after that. So, uh, uh, she said, Oh, we're not done yet. We're going to do another, another go with the die. When can you come in? I was like, Oh, okay. So we made a new appointment and I'm going back in on Friday. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So she did, I mean, she trimmed up like the sides and the beard and stuff, but it's kind of hard to see when I don't like do anything well, with you, it. You posted like a before photo. It then never followed up. <laughs> no, I didn't post an after photo. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 no, it's because I wanted people to come to the stream and see it. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Because yeah. yeah, like yeah. for two days, I was like, all right, let's go see if that. Nope, still no after. Yeah, photo. where's that after? <laughs> where's that after? Oh, he hasn't posted. Yeah. Maybe, maybe no. tomorrow. Maybe he'll. You know. yeah, the whole thing was to come to my stream and, and see what it was. But it wasn't It wasn't that drastic of a change. But hopefully we can, we can make it so. Mm. But uh, I think the way that we should go in the future... Yeah, is dark first and then light for the roots, so it stands out a little better. Mm. Yeah, I could. You could pull off, you know, going back, circling back to Kingdom Hearts here. You could pull off some uh, some Lee cosplay if you really wanted to, Zeke. Just grow it out mm-hmm. a little bit. Oh, I I could pull off a lot of cosplay. He's, Let's he's not kidding. Uh, I mean, you could. That's true. <laughs> That's true. He prefers Axel again, JP. That's yeah. true. He does. Canon, you know, he does prefer Axel. He's also. He broke the goddamn fourth wall every time he said something. He like talked about how the story was so slow multiple times through that game and referenced the oddest shit throughout oh, the entire God. game. It was weird. Your emote is fucking horrifying. <laughs> that's Axel. That's Lee <laughs> with the red hair. Oh my that's, God. that's what I'm saying. If you grow it out, it, it could you could work. You can make it happen. You just gotta get yourself a, a big black robe with some like silver tassels, then you're good to go. Be great. Yeah. It's almost as horrifying as the the kiss that I. The, yeah. The oh god. I made. Dude, I let's talk. That was after. <laughs> that was after the last Court of Swords, right? We haven't talked about that yet. That hasn't happened. I don't think we have. I'm not sure we have. Yeah. 
So I tuned into Zeke's stream one night <laughs> on a Wednesday after Far Verona. And the first thing I see is man vs. game sitting on a green screened cooler upside down with a Spider-Man mask on um, yep. and Zeke with a red wig attempting to kiss him just completely and utterly confused as to why any of this is happening because they're supposed to be playing i don't even remember what game you guys were going to play or did play uh re6 i believe yeah you're supposed to be that's why i was tuning in because you're playing resident <laughs> evil um, yeah and i just tune in to see man is spider-man and zeke is mary jane just doing a kiss for charity yep. and now it's an emote that's right me. so it's it's yeah it's a four block emote if you can pull it off but uh yeah it's a long time in the making yeah like that that was that, that thing is almost like nine months like has supposed to it was supposed to have been done nine months ago yeah. but uh you know people take vacations or you know leave the platform completely for several months at a time yeah and you can't really complete these things that you promise so you on a couple cruises you know you do them when you can yeah and uh <laughs> you know we got it we got it done so there it is and uh it turned out Better than I, better than I imagined. Better than I'd hope. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's, it's yeah. pretty. Fun There's a highlight videos. highlight reel out there of the whole thing if you want to check it out. It's on my YouTube. Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, well, besides smooching man and looking like Axel, what else you been up to? Uh, completed the CD Ramathon month, which was a a rousing success. I at the beginning of the month, I was like, oh man, I don't know if it's gonna do very well. Boy, was I wrong, man! It did really well, like nice. for the for the channel and whatnot. Like it was fun, and I, I, I wish I could say I'm, I'm surprised, but I'm not. I'm no longer surprised that people come out in force to watch the installation streams and then leave. Like, <laughs> like I, twenty percent of my it's, audience leaves once I get the fucking game going. It's the it's the I did best a five hour something? stream of nothing but trying to install Black Dahlia. <laughs> Yeah. And I was like rocking sweet numbers that whole time, and I didn't even get the fucking game going. Yeah, it's so it's so good when you do something because you're just like, I either have to do this or like, I don't know, I want to do it. I'm gonna stream it anyway. And all of a sudden, there's all these people, and you're like, Well, great, good, okay, I'm done doing this thing. I'm gonna do the real thing. And they're like, Eh, we don't want to watch you play video games. We're we're gonna go. Thanks for the DOS screens, though. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeti Elder has it exactly right. It's it was trouble shouting. Uh, <laughs> that's a good, that was a that's a great name for the stream. Yeah, you should coin it troubleshouting in the future. You should just find things to troubleshout on your channel. Make it a make yep. it a weekly thing. Learn how like, to we're code gonna fix. Or we're gonna change oil. Yeah, we're gonna, change, change we're gonna troubleshout how to change your oil. Do it. People would watch that shit. That's a, yeah. a great series in the making, without a doubt. I had some troubleshouting with my DDR pad that I paid $400 mm -hmm. for a 55 pound metal DDR pad. Literally, I'm not even making three songs, each song about oh, a minute man. long and it fucking dies. Three <sighs> songs. <the> worst. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, that's, I guess that was a fun three songs. I guess I'll have to send it back or something. <laughs> it's just completely oh, no. fucked. So we'll see. Do you even know what happened with it? Yeah. This, this thing is, shittily made this is like the controller box and it's basically oh. just like the cheapest plastic plastic housing on like a arduino board that's not well mm -hmm. made so the second it goes like this it loses connection in some parts so yeah the, the actual pad Perfect. is fine but the actual controller box sucks so i yelled at the company and they're now sending me six different boxes so if one fails i have the next one to go through so Six redundancies. If only we had thought of seven. Yeah. Yeah. That and I also ordered, uh, I contacted some, some Polish men to, uh, to build a, a DDR. Because apparently DDRs, Poland is the capital of DDR. I'm not making this up. It's fucking massive over there. And so they make like custom metal pads. And so I ordered one. And uh, they're going to they're gonna make it happen. We'll <laughs> see if it works. Yeah. I admire your dedication, my friend. I just want, dude, those three, those three songs were a lot of, they were good. They were fun. That's what Amanda was talking about that just recently too. Like if we 
got like a metal DDR box, like what I actually tried. I'm like, yeah, I would try if it was, I don't want to do like this, like squishy pad bullshit. Like I want to do like the real thing. And I'd have to do it in the privacy of my own home. There's no way I'm going to go to a fucking public arcade and start learning DDR. Like, no, that's the best part. Yeah. That's the best part. <laughs> like that shit's so not fun. doing that. Yeah. I will go on a stage and I will talk to people and, and all that shit. I will do that. I will pub. I will do public speaking. I will not fucking sit there and look like a goddamn goober on a goddamn pad to learn the game. At least I want some sort of, you know, ability to, to play the game a bit before I, I actually, you know, play it there. the remarkable thing about it was the first song was like me. It was like learning a bike. First song I was fucking off flats for a minute. I was like, all right, I figured out, I know what I'm doing. I know, like I remembered to play second song. I did a 333 combo or something like that. Didn't miss a beat. And I was like, oh, this is fucking sick. That goes into the third song, and I'm like gasping for air because of how out of shape <laughs> I am. <laughs> I can no longer do it. I used to do that shit for like four or five hours straight. And one minute of a song just killed me. Uh, <laughs> I had to take like a little mini break. So, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, man, I know all about that shit. Yeah. Like, I was doing the same thing. Richard Simmons, let's go. This is going to be easy. Everything's <laughs> going to be fine. It's only like a 45-minute workout. Minute five, I'm just like, fuck me. What did I get myself into? Oh, I'm so out of shape. I can't, I can't even fucking sweat to these oldies. I'm dying. Yeah, it was tough. But it, it made me want to play more because I was like, this is good. This is good. So, And then fucking DJ Wheat messages me when he sees that my metal pad died. He's like, dude, what if you just bought an entire arcade machine and put it in your basement? I'm like, you fucking <laughs> asshole. I'm saying. Don't fuck that. I went and looked up the price. <laughs> Shit's fucking... It's expensive, man. <laughs> it's super pricey. It's like 16 <laughs> grand for the 20th... Uh, or 20 year edition coming out. It's 16 grand to buy it, a brand new arcade machine. So Wow. Not I'm, 1600, I'm, 16 grand. Not, fuck yeah. me. I'm not that invested in DDR. Uh, that's that's a lot. I could go fucking put a money down on a car, on a nice car, <laughs> yeah, and drive that for a much longer time than I probably played DDR. So, yeah. Imagine if that only lasts three songs. <laughs> yeah, I know. Fuck me, that would just suck. That'd be the worst. <laughs> All right, we've killed thirty minutes. <clears throat> we've given Max some time to make up some goals, and now it's time to put him to the test. So here we go, Adam. The show is yours. Uh huh. All right, let's do it. Uh, so beginning, uh, beginning the episode, let's work out goals. Uh, Ramus, you're unconscious right now, but Dan, you can write goals for Ramus, right? So you, uh, assuming you will eventually wake up again, and we're not just like getting you to keep coming on the show so you can bring the numbers up. Um, <laughs> what do you want your, uh, what do you want your goals to be? Um, I will keep them the same because I never really had a chance to work okay. on any of the ones from last time. That's true. You just fought the big man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So find out Grave Dirt's origin. Uh, see if you can trust Yota's father and uh, find out where the Mara come from, uh, which yeah. might lead to more mind breaking, depending on the vector by which you discover that information. <laughs> uh, cool. Okay. All right. Uh, Maharib, what would you like your goals to be? Now, I did, I'm trying to decide if I or trying to figure out if I cleared goals last time. Did we reach the Temple of the Sun? No, you're you're still outside it. Okay. Right? The last we set the last time we set off, uh, Maharib and Berg had left a drunken, sobbing Yotazo by the side of the road with some peasants who they themselves you're all headed in the same direction, uh, and the two of you carried Ramus off to um, uh, to the temple, but you hadn't gotten there yet. Like you were you were at the outside of the temple. Okay, I have. So we're going to do figure out what happened to Ramus, uh, which is what I, it's a different figure out what happened to Ramus than the last time. <laughs> right. I was like, I was looking at your goal is figure out what happened to Ramus. And I'm like, it's different, but it still stands. The wording is perfect. Stands. Yeah. So we'll do that. Uh, reach Temple of the Sun will be the second one. And then okay. the third one is openly going to be reconcile with Yota Zo, but I'm going to whisper you the end of the goal. Because if I okay. say it openly, then it it's, won't be a fun goal. But if I keep it secret okay. between the two of us, it won't <laughs> right. we'll be secret. I'll write, I'll write down, reconcile with Yotazo, ominous dot, dot, dot. Yeah, okay. I'll message right. you now. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, and then speaking of whom, uh, Yotazo, you were feeling <clears throat> confused, 
Like things are not quite right up in Elephant Town. Um, yeah. So what do you want? What do you want your goals to be? Um. <clears throat> <laughs> the funny thing is like uh according to like my affliction whatever affliction huh? it, that yeah, may whatever be whatever the hell's going wrong with you yeah yeah um it's strange because <laughs> like it, the, the i feel like my one of my goals is just fuck it <laughs> who cares <laughs> <laughs> Because that kind of has that effect, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But uh, my three goals, as they are, as they were before, I mean, they could remain the same. Like, find out the identity of Grave Dirt, find out uh, if this key to heaven is real, and meet and talk with my father. Yeah. I could morph those according to other things, like, um, according to according to my affliction, and say, <laughs> just, just call the, the old man out. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to re if you want to rephrase them, um yeah, you can you can certainly do that if you want to like flavor them a little bit differently. Um, yeah. I think I think believe, I will believe um, in nothing, uh find out where Lebowski's money is, <laughs> yeah. cut off someone's Johnson. Yeah. Uh, uh yeah, so right now right now I have find out if the key to heaven is real. Would you like to keep that one? Yes. Okay. All right. And then the second um, one I then, have for you. Yeah, second one is find out the identity of grave dirt. Yeah. I uh I Yeah, I like that one. And then the third okay. one I want to change to um have it out with with father. Mhm. Mm instead, instead of okay. meet and talk to him, I'm going to have <laughs> yeah. it out with him. Have it out. Okay. Okay. Cool. Good, good. I dig it. Uh, all right. Cool. Uh, and then Berg, uh, you had uh, get my friends to the monastery, find a way to overcome my fear, and protect Yota from his father's corruption. Do you want to keep those? I think all those are still good, them? yeah. They're all still pretty solid. Okay. I wasn't okay. panicking. Right. <laughs> you were panicking. It's okay. Yes, good. Thank you for telling me that I'm panicking. Mm -hmm. You're good. Okay. Uh, cool. So I imagine we begin with, uh, we begin with Berg and, uh, and Maharib carrying, who's got, who's got the Ramus right now? And what is the deal? Like, is he on someone's who's, back? I think, are you, are you carrying him between you? I think Max elected to carry him. I, I forget exactly what yeah, happened. Pretty sure Max? I did. Okay. Pretty sure I did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, so Max is okay. carrying him. So, so Berg, you're just you're carrying, uh, you're carrying Ramus in your arms. Uh, mm -hmm. He is he is still uh, comatose, and you arrive at the uh, you arrive at the 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 front gates of the monastery. So, this monastery was at one point a a beautiful sprawling temple complex. Um, both of the characters who have been here before are either unconscious or not present. So, uh, for you two, this is a, this is a new site. Uh, the outside wall is, it wasn't originally built to like hold invaders out or anything. It's just a way to set the perimeter of the, of the temple. So it's maybe, maybe like 10 feet at its tallest. Uh, and there's this wall that's all the way around a kind of marshy, um, lowland. Uh, all the trees have been cut back to make room for this this enormous temple. And it's not a single building, but it's a selection of buildings within the uh, within the temple's wall. So there is a there's a main temple uh, at the back whose spires raise uh, two or three stories. Uh, there is a, a tower uh, with a, a glass kind of pyramid at the top. Uh, where even now, long after the, the sun temple has been used as a temple, uh, the sun's light reflects off of the, the glass surface of the, um, uh, of the tower. Um, and then you can make out several smaller buildings, uh, ostensibly where the monks would have lived. For this is a, not just a temple, but a monastery. Uh, this is home to, uh, or was, home to monks and to priests and uh, a center of uh, holy community within the Court of Swords. Now that was before the rise of the the 
king of black rivers uh, or the necromancer king and his army the temple has long fallen into uh, disrepair and uh, shows signs of damage from uh, from a battle uh, there are um, sections of the wall that are, are broken though not all the way broken in uh, there lie um, in the the pools all around the temple um, brick they have fallen from the from the temple's walls and uh, the temple gate is uh, is currently open but in front of it there is a um, there's a, a group of people and it reminds you a little bit of crossing the north border um, but maybe less aggressive uh, there are uh, there are sort of lay followers uh, and visitors kind of gathered around much like the cart dragging folk you saw in the jungle uh, these appear to be pilgrims Despite the fact that the temple, the Monastery of the Sun, is no longer a proper monastery, there are people who are coming here for, for whatever purpose. Um, the place is not shut down uh, or, or abandoned. So <laughs> do you approach on, on the road, just like walk up to the crowd? Or do you, I mean, I figure the, the crowd, there's probably like 30 people, uh, groups of maybe like four or five families. Uh, they have pack animals and and uh, and what have you. They look like they've made a, a journey, but for some reason they haven't been allowed to enter yet. Uh, so do you just you just walk up, or what do you do? Mm, <clears throat> if I look over up and down at Burke, he doesn't <clears throat> have you don't have any symbology of heaven or anything on you, right? Um, <laughs> no. Yeah, no. I think he did actually, <laughs> didn't he? Yeah, like the so heaven heaven doesn't have the it's not like um they don't it's not like, like a Christianity it, yeah. yeah it's not like Christianity where there's this generic oh. like I love religion like he's got a big cross on his face it's it's more that his his armor and his weapons are crafted in the same way a temple <clears> might be <throat> um so he he has a, a kind of holy warrior vibe to him but you could cover that with a cloak relatively easily right like he could yeah. he could pull a cloak around True. his shoulders True and enough. then he would he would just look like a like it would make power. sense that we do that yeah, yeah are you wearing a cloak so if, if not i suggest yeah. it yeah yeah i would you know what you suggest it because i don't think berg would be that <laughs> yeah right it, it would occur to berg but probably would occur to you before berg okay so. yeah so i uh we're walking up the hill and i see the the giant crowd of people before the the monastery and I'll turn and just, I think I like look up and down <clears throat> at your, your person and realize that you are base. There's no, there's no symbol of heaven on you, but you are basically a symbol of heaven just by existing. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, yeah, it's like the, the, the aesthetics of, of his armor are yeah. similar. Like you, you could, if you looked at somebody uh, like a, it's, he's like a, a Warhammer 40k character. Like he's got the big, like lion head shoulders and it'd be like somebody wearing a suit with, um, like images from the Bible on it and like a stained glass panel in their armor. Like it's, it's very clear who made this armor and, and who he serves. Right. Even okay. though he's covered in like shit right now. Cause he's been schlepping through the jungle. Okay. Um, then I, yeah, I turn, look at you, look you up and down. Do you have a, something to cover up with? They will recognize you. Not you as Berg, but what you represent. Or like looks over himself like oh yes i suppose that makes sense i think i have something here he like goes in his pack like like whoops out like a yeah i reach over and like grab framus's body and hoist it onto my shoulder so bird can look yeah. through his bag now, right ramus is now now ramus is actually dressed like a priest uh Ram right. ramus is wearing the the raiments of the tower uh, so there is that. I think then as I'm grabbing him, hmm, do you think if I remove these symbology of the tower, it will upset Ramus? I don't believe it matters right now in his current state. Hmm. Uh, I like spin my head around. Is there a place that I can like put Ramus into an alleyway or something like that to remove said garment from him? Yeah, no one, I mean, at a glance, no one seems to have, have noticed you, right? There's no, um, there's no one out, out patrolling. There's some, some conversations happening. Like you can hear people talking up by the, the actual gates, but you're still, you're still a ways away. 
Okay. Uh, then if it's possible, I'll like remove some of the, uh, the garb. Uh, I don't want to remove his clothes. I don't want to be carrying a naked Ramus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no? That, that would be very suspicious. Yeah, yeah. but I, I will remove the symbolic garb uh, that he's probably wearing. Mm-hmm. Hide, hide his holy symbol. Yeah. Uh, where do you, where, what do you do with that? Because that's, that's like the most obvious. That's the source of his magic. So, <sighs> Is it just like a necklace? What, what is your symbol uh, of, does Dan, is that a specific to each person? I mean, it can it can take a bunch of different forms. Okay, then Dan, what what would that be for you? Uh, for me, it's a signet ring of the sun, ironically. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I will take the ring and put it into my pocket. I probably slide okay. off all the all right. rings on his fingers and put them into my pocket. Make make yeah. a note on your make a note on your your various your various inventories that whatever you're whatever you're wearing on your hands, uh, Ramus, you now no longer have. Uh, and uh, Maharib, you you gather up uh, whatever he was you know, whatever he was wearing. Okay. Um, and yeah, and you take what do you do with his? Uh, so like, there's yeah, there would be like a sash or like an some kind of overgarment uh, of the tower. What do you do with that? Do you just like ball it up and? throw it in the bushes or no all uh i mean i treat it with with respect even i, I treat it with respect because it's ramus's not because of the respect that i have for the arcana so it, it's folded up nicely and i'll put it into my uh my bag uh to carry okay. with for safekeeping but um yeah I, I don't discard it or anything yeah sure okay all right uh, so now it just looks like you're carrying a, uh, a burnt, f- burnt faced, unconscious, um, like muddy and, and dirt looking, but reasonably well dressed under that uh, man. Uh, and uh, Burgess is uh, cloaked uh, now so that, that at a glance you can't see his armor. OK. Um, <clears throat> and then I, I think once we're all done, I look back to Berg and, and ask, was Ramus liked by this temple of the sun. Um, I'm thinking about that for a moment. I don't know if I, it depends on how much Ramus actually shared about that. Not much really. Cause that's like his early, yeah, I don't, early. Well, I don't you, know, met, Ramus, you met Ramus, you, were, you met Ramus in prison. And did you, yeah. did you ever talk to Berg about like what yeah, your life before, for the prison? I did share the story of how I, as a cleric of the sun, I did burn a noble son's face with magic. Uh-huh. So, and the son, I did not like that, but I haven't really been back there ever since the incident. So I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So that's enough for Bert to go off of. Um, liked by the temple. I mean, you have met Ramus, have you not? Mm. I've met a uh, shell. I believe of Ramus. I did not know him when he was, I guess, human. Ramus is not how people say a people person. Hmm. Fair enough. Well, I suppose we can't use his name then to get us entry into this place. Do you have any ideas of your own? Or like just kind of sit there for a second, throw it as brown. No, not right now. Just to clarify too, are we, we're, we're approaching the Temple of the Sun, which was like, we're going to the, where his father, Yota's father is, right? Isn't that, is, is this a different... It's occupied by. Okay, so they're not Temple of the Sun people, right? No, as far as we definitely know, definitely not. Yeah. Right. Okay, that's where I was getting confusion for a second there. Yeah. Yeah. So in that, in that, keeping that in mind, then Berg would would just say, "This necromancer wants to meet Ramus in person. Meet is uh." The lady, her name escapes me, but... Grave dirt. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> who is that? Wait, who said that? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a small child right over your shoulder. Brave dirt. Brave dirt. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. So in there, he falls out and he's. So we have that going for him. I don't know how much it will help us. Mm. All right. Well, we'll reveal that when needed. For now, let us. I like think about how I look and think about how Berg looks and then like look at everyone else. Try to fit in. We'll see. Might not work. <laughs> yeah, like you, you guys actually don't look that out of place beside the fact that you're both very tall and you're carrying an unconscious middle aged man. Um, you, you are, as with everyone else, you look like you've been walking a long time through a shitty jungle. You look tired, you look weak. And uh, you look like you've been through some shit. And so does everyone else, right? These, these people, as you, as you walk, and we change from kind of the background being the, the jungle to this kind of open area to the road leading up to the temple, and you start kind of passing your way through the, the group of people, you can see that, that no one really casts too much of a glance in your direction. They're just like, oh, more weary travelers. Uh, everyone looks exhausted. Uh, you see that among them, uh, there, there are people who look injured or sick, right? Like you see, a, an old woman pulling a, a cart with, a, a younger, a younger woman, uh, unconscious on it. Um, you know, you see, uh, you see an old man walking with a, a crutch and he's missing part of his leg. Right? There's a bloody like bandage tied off. Like these people look like they've been through some shit and they have found their way here much as you have, uh, battle scarred and exhausted. Uh, and so you uh, you approach the, uh, the the gates of the temple, and so we we crossfade then from that scene to uh, in the jungle. Uh, Yota, are you still being consoled by the by the peasants? Like, is that where the scene starts, or have you like gotten up and are like, let's go? Like, where I'm gonna let you kind of set the set the scene here. Oh yeah, no no, no. Um, he's deep in the deep in the cups and. Uh... As one is wont to do in, in situations, or so I've heard. So I've heard <laughs> that people right. who like to drink get uh -huh. in those. Uh, he's changed his mind completely about what's going on mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. left the peasants behind and is determined to go see his father right now. Okay. So he so is see, walking so with you, purpose. Like <laughs> Right, and and you're doing that thing, I think, where you're like, you're, you're kind of st stumbling forward, and as long as you keep moving, you won't fall down. Like you're kind of yeah, leaning the head, forward, head over the knees. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the way the way a baby runs, right? Exactly. That like you're constantly yeah. afraid they're gonna fall on their face. So we see you, yep. and and you hear a voice behind you. Uh, you hear a, a man shouting, uh, y "Yota, Yota, wait!" wait and this like peasant runs up on his wooden is like wooden sandals and you're still back in the jungle and behind mm -hmm. him his family is still bringing the bringing this stuff him and his uh and his husband and so he runs up he's like out of breath and he's like you are very fast for an elephant now i know mm -hmm. that you think and are do you stop or are you still like he's having a run like walk speed walk while he tries to talk to you or do you stop well i think i think he like he tries to stop and turn around and just he like gets his head around and then just lands flat on his ass, <laughs> and you fall in the mud. You splash mud on him, and he he yep. he yeah. He looks and down. I just and he, look he, up uh, at says, him from the mud. Yeah, he says, "Well, that that is a good start. You can't just rush to the temple, not in the state that you're in. You have to make a good impression. Now I know that you are upset about your father. I didn't catch why exactly, but." I know you can't just go running in there. You have to have a plan. Now get get up, and he he like mm -hmm. leans over and puts his arms out to try to help you. I kind of like bat it away. I get up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I so thought yeah. that uh, going to the temple was the plan. Yes. And he said, yes, "Let but... me in because he's in there." But you, you, you can't just assume that that's how it's going to work. You're going to walk up to the front door and say, I am important. Let me in. It, it won't do. You've been then why not? From home alone. Things are different now. You need to listen more and speak less. You're worse than my children. Things are different now than they were. The court, 
They see your kind differently. Maybe up in the north, they still bow and scrape. And I appreciate all the hard work your soul has done, but there is a new power in this land, and maybe... And he grabs one of your ears and, like, flops it. He says, maybe what you are is a liability now, and not of benefit. Maybe you should think with your head, and not with your trunk. Hmm? What are you going to say if they turn you away? I hadn't gotten that far. Mm, I know you haven't. Just rushing in. Just like my son. The only thing you will get from rushing in is a sore head. Ow. And I kind of like lean over down. top of him. Mm -hmm. And I go, Who are you to tell me what to do? Ah. <laughs> uh. You might be enormous, but you are young yet. You may be older than me, but you think and act like a child, and I think and act like a father. I have raised many children. Not, not just these ones. And he points, and there's, he's got like five kids with him. He's like, but more, many, many more, all gone out to the world to live their lives, prepared to do so by their upbringing. So listen to me. Because I know what a foolish child looks like. And you look like a foolish child to me. Very well. Then I shall be the student. And you the teacher. And I will let you tell me <clears throat> what to do. It's not about telling you what to do. It is about helping you make good decisions. I am not your Sifu. I am not here to teach you katas. And he like does a little like practice karate in the air. He says, I'm just trying to keep you from bashing your head against the wall. Mm. Maybe the wall is exactly where my head should be. You ever think of that? Mm -hmm. And he turns, and he's, he's looking over his shoulder while you're speaking. We can see this, this giant goat dragging the, the cart through the mud. As much dragging it as it is rolling, like the wheels are all clogged. And this poor goat is just, like, struggling. And there's, like, kids riding on it. And, and he, turns, he turns back to you, and he says, If that's all you want, then why don't you take his place? And he points back at the goat. You can pull the cart. We'll put the yoke on you, and the children can ride you. And we'll put the goat in your clothes. And I think it would go better for the both of you. What do you think of that? Are you smarter than a goat or not? <laughs> there are times when I wonder that myself. <laughs> Very well. Let me wipe the, the mud from my clothing and clear my head a, a little bit, and perhaps we can discuss further what uh, course of action would be best suited for me. And he, he nods, uh, and he, uh, he says... Um... Why don't you begin by telling me about your father? You're obviously nervous to go and speak with him. Otherwise, why would you drink so much? What is he like? Hmm? Mm. My father is a very respected man. At least he was. He was revered among the people, very wealthy, never met someone as with a, a singular purpose as my father. He loved his studies and his maps and his lore and his antiquities and 
all that kind of thing. And uh, I was never one to give any praise to anyone thought it wasn't necessary. But he's in the hands of mm, these people who maybe you can help me by telling me what these people are like. You've been around them. Do not try to change the subject on me, boy. <laughs> you said much of what other people think of your father, not much about what you feel about him. Hmm? When you think of this man, this man full of wisdom, but so unwilling to share any of it with you, or kindness, it sounds. Have you come to make amends? Have you wronged him in some way you have to apologize for? Or is it the other way around? You hope that he will see his darling boy and begin to weep and bring you into his arms, hmm? Mm. What do you feel about this visit? No, I... I want him to f to look at me. And see... What I've become. What I've made of myself without him. But... <laughs> if I showed him what I look like right now, I probably wouldn't get the result I would like. Hmm. I want him to see me as an equal, not as a disappointment. I have a son. I have many sons, but <laughs> the one I am thinking of, he went off to fight. Uh, they were bandits in the hills. And so he joined the army and went to fight them. And when he came back, he was different. Cold. Stern. He cared less for his family than I thought I had instilled in him. But it did not mean I did not love him anymore. A child and a parent, their soul is together bound in this life. And my children, even if they look like you, I would still love them. <laughs> but... <laughs> and he, he squints at you through his like sun-weathered brow. He's like, well, that's so funny. Hmm? Nothing. I was just imagining you with a a son that looked like me. It was a... Well, you, you never know. <laughs> he folds his Very arms true. and says, maybe, <laughs> maybe my children will go on to be reincarnated as something better than a farmer or a peasant. It's what a parent can hope for, hmm? <laughs> yeah, but we're not concerned true. about <laughs> the next life. We're concerned about this one. And you are worried that your father won't see you for who you are if you show up covered in mud and stinking of wine, which you do very badly, I might add. So it, is it will be some time. <laughs> he, he rolls his eyes like, okay, drunkie. <laughs> but we have some time, and we will not gain access to the monastery immediately. You will stay with us, and I will have my children wash the stink off of you and we will see about changing your clothes i think i have some bed sheets we can sew together and then when you are presentable maybe you can go and meet your father with some dignity instead of like an oaf because even though your father when he sees you i am sure will welcome you with open arms you will feel better if you do not smell so bad and do not look so terrible Less mud, less wine stink, patience. And when he says that, he turns around and he like shouts at the goat. He's like, come on, you stupid goat. Hurry up. We have places to be. I reach my, my trunk out 
and and kind of grab uh-huh. him by the shoulder and try and gently like turn him around. Yeah. Mm. Why are you doing this? Um, does it seem more honorable than just for gold, of which I do have some? But it seems there's something else. And he, he looks at you and, and he says, why, why, would, why would I want your gold? Then the others would just find out I had it and rob me. Besides, where we're going... There's there's nothing to spend it on. I have Very clothes. well, then answer my question. I have my children. He looks at you and he says, Why? Why does anyone do anything good? In my experience, it's usually for gold. And if not that? Guilt. You have a debt, whether it's physical or mental, moral, to pay. You feel like you owe somebody a good turn because someone did you one or the like. And he just like, he looks, make an insight check. Make an insight check okay. on this, dude. Uh, boop. Okay, nice. He's not mad. He's just disappointed. Um, oh, fuck. Like, well, dude, come he's on, just, man. He's he's <laughs> just like he's he's sad that your 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 life has led you to this place where you're so suspicious of like other people, and you can see like he hides it away. He does that thing where like a, a, an adult like has a feeling, but it's too complex to explain to a kid, and so he like he he puts it away so you don't have to see it, or he tries. But, like, you're not a five-year-old, right? So, like, you know Right, this. right, right. And he, he just shakes his head a little. Well, I don't even know your name. But. And he, yeah, he looks, he looks surprised at that. And he, he says, oh, <laughs> I was so concerned about you. I, I didn't say. Uh, <laughs> I am called Prosperous Rabbit for good reason. Well, my good friend, Prosperous Rabbit, it is a rare thing in these 123 years that I've lived to see someone who does something for someone else and expects nothing in return. I've been a long time around this. Do we call it planet? <laughs> Do we call it I land? No, call like, it like we. JP, JP and I were talking about this earlier. Like yeah, in the world, it? yeah. It's just it. So, so in the cosmology of Court of Swords, there's there's only two places. There's there's heaven, and then there's the world. So it's the world. There's nothing else outside okay. of it. So that's what it is. Like unless you're a wizard, okay. but that's whatever. Neither here nor there. I've been traveling a long time around this world, and uh, I hope you forgive my assumptions. People I've traveled with and the people I've met don't usually do things because they are the right thing. I shall strive to not assume that about you or the people here as much as I used to when I was younger. Any. He nods uh, and he uh, and he says, uh, "Maybe, maybe you come from a more dangerous world than I do." But well, he shrugs. You people need to look out for each other. And besides, look at you. You're helpless. You're covered in mud. You smell like wine. You obviously needed some help. I mean, not more wine. <laughs> and uh, you've managed to pick yourself up out of the mud, and that's a good start. And as soon as, and he looks back, as soon as that damn goat catches up, we'll make our way to the temple. One foot in front of the other, until we get you where you need to go. <sighs> oh. 
Well, I'd, uh, I'd ask you what I should do about my, uh, traveling companions, but, uh, it seems they very much would rather, uh, <laughs> go without me at this point. And, uh, I can't really blame them. Uh, even the best of friends need a break from each other now and then. Too much of a good thing can be just as bad as not enough. Give them time. You're all headed in the same direction. I'm sure you'll meet up with them again. What will happen to them if they go to the temple themselves, the three of them, without me? And he, he shrugs and he says, uh, the king of the Riverlands welcomes all. I imagine they'll be let in. Maybe given food? That's what we're hoping for. The king of the Riverlands, who might that be? The Black King. Ah. <laughs> Jakes his head. You have been gone a long time, haven't you? Mm. Yes, 50 or so winters. Mm. Well, he's the new boss around here. Well, I found uh, one king is very much like the next, so I doubt he'll be that much different. <laughs> Maybe from where you're sitting. Very true. Mm, now, I will, in fact, help you carry your cart. I'm already covered in mud and I smell foul. So I might as well join the goat in doing his duty. It's the least I can do for the kindness you have shown me. And I go to work on the cart, like drunkenly trying to like get the mud off of the fucking wheels yeah. and like that kind of shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's only room, <laughs> there's only room, uh, for, for like one pack animal. Right. So one of the, one of the kids helps you like to untie the, the goat and then you get a hold of the thing that was on the goat before, and you start to pull the wagon, right? You sort of set your shoulders and crush and start pulling the wagon. And the wagon moves a little bit and then suddenly gets much heavier. And when you look back, you see that the goat has climbed up on top of the wagon and just like sat down and is just staring at you like, Bleh. like waiting, for you to, <laughs> wait, waiting for you to pull the wagon. <laughs> and you can do it. Like, it's fine. It's just... Yeah. You know, now you have to pull the goat and the goat is like, yep, I'm going to have a nap. And just like curls up on top of the wagon. Oh yeah. And as soon as he has a nap, like I, like as I'm dragging, like I reach down my trunk and grab a clump of mud and just fucking huck it at his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hidden. Yeah. And so yeah. You, you continue to, to drag the car. Okay. So we, uh, we crossfade back to Maharib and, uh, and Berg. And Ramus, and is the plan here for the the two of you to push through the the crowd and try to get up to the front, or you wanna you wanna talk to any of these folks, or? Uh, does it I think it's largely dependent on are we coming up as just like like how are we approaching this? Are, are we saying like here's Ramus to get us in, or are we I just don't... being like <laughs> what's going on inside have... there? Yeah, I, I think we're just <laughs> we've brought you this man. I think we're just yeah. approaching okay. up front, like we're at least. My intentions are not to just walk up and like present Ramus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Like he's fucking Simba. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Ramus. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you ascend Pride Rock. Um, and uh, yeah. And as you as you walk up, like this isn't a lineup. You're not budging in front of anybody. People are just like around uh, waiting. And you see, as you get closer to the gate, um, the gates are open, but outside, uh, outside of it, there are, um, guards. Um, there are men and women, uh, they're wearing the big like, <laughs> rice farmer hats to keep the sun off of their shoulders. Um, they have breastplates in black lacquered enamel, uh, in the shapes of like, not like devil faces, because it's like the devil arcana, but like strange, um, strange creatures like manticores or um, chimeras, uh, kind of scary looking the way like samurai masks are. So this black lacquered like breastplate, but otherwise they're dressed like um, just in, in like simple clothes uh, and sandals. And they're standing out leaning on spears and just talking to each other. Um, and you see a group of them talking to one of the one of the farmers uh, as you uh, as you walk up. 
and I think one of them, uh, a woman, she she notices you. She looks up and like kind of tilts her hat back so she can get a look at you, and watches you as you uh, as you approach. If you want to approach them, mm, I think uh, <laughs> I like nudge Berg with my um, arm, and at this point I'm carrying Ramus, and so I I just look at Berg. You should be the one to talk. I, I'm not much a talker. I look. Are there are there like a bunch of orcs around us, or are there not that many orcs? Mm-hmm. Would you like there to be orcs? Well, I think the the implication lo- would be like <laughs> I'm unique. You're not. <laughs> I mean, yeah. The yeah, the question is like, if you are you looking around f- to be I mean, like that, that statement still is true. it going to be is it going to be weird? No, yeah. no. There's so there there's lots of there's lots of orcs in the Court of Swords because this is where the dwarves lived and the dwarves brought them from wherever they actually lived when they moved here, yeah, um, to serve them. So yeah, I think there's probably like two or three that you spot. Okay, yeah. So I just look around and I like use my head to to gesture towards them and just say, uh, yeah. I am unique here. You are not. They will not think twice about you. It's better if I don't speak. I'll keep my head down. What? What do I say? Then? We are just looking for entry. Nothing more. Okay. I will do this. Like motions are right, let's go. Yeah, and I do my best to like if you want me to make a stealth roll for this, I'll be glad to do it. But I, I'm trying to like just conceal the fact that I'm a Goliath. <laughs> so I'm trying to look non-assuming. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean you you have this sort of grayish skin tone and you're real tall. You could be like a like a weird human. Um you don't have any any like you're not disguising yourself. You're more like performing humanness okay right like sure. kind of like hunching your shoulders and so let's let's have you make a performance check because it's not quite like you're not flat out lying but you're not also really like making a disguise it's just trying to seem less unique nice this uh negative two will come in handy here and wow that, nice 16. okay yeah so you know you're, you're <laughs> slouching and kind of making yourself I'm smaller yeah, people might think you're a big Earth Genasi or like a weird orc or like something like you're not you're not like a dragonborn where it's like really obvious you're something strange. Uh so yeah, okay, you kind of like hang back. Uh and uh and Berg, you approach still still carrying uh Ramus. Uh no, I'm I'm carrying Ramus. Okay. Well, I guess yeah, oh, you're, so you're carrying us and Berg just walks up. Right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So the the woman, the guard, she she blocks your way but not like aggressively it's not like puts the spear in your face or like steps in your way uh she looks at you like oh hold on you can't just walk past me uh and she uh she she greets you um in like not great orcish uh she says uh she says um uh hello brother but the greeting she uses is wrong it's the wrong one for this situation and the word brother she uses the word that means um sibling when what she's supposed she's trying to say was like comrade but she's trying Mm -hmm. and she says it kind of uncertainly and kind of gives you a head tip she just she's just human right yeah she's just human just a filthy stupid human right that's right just a filthy shitty (laughs) pathetic human yeah um hello you see do you switch to common yeah okay she uh, she laughs and uh, she's like, <laughs> "Oh, <laughs> thank goodness, my uh, orcish is not great." Uh, are you and your friend here to make a deposit? She looks at the at Ramus. Not exactly a friend. Yeah, need some help. Bird might be able to have some help here curious about and then just motions yeah yeah yeah. she uh she says uh oh sorry (laughs) my mistake i thought he was dead we've had a lot of that Mm, people bringing their dead here for uh well for offerings 
Uh, but if he's still alive, I mean, maybe we can keep him from being an offering. Uh, we're a little bit, um, well, she looks and like looks back at you. Things are still a bit chaotic around here, but what's your name? Uh, who are you? Where do you come from? And she snaps her fingers and another guard comes over and this other guard has a book and he like <clears throat> sets it down on a broken piece of stone and opens it. And there's a bunch of, uh, of writing, uh, in it, uh, in, in common. And, uh, and they flip to a page where there's like an entry at the bottom, empty entry. And, uh, yeah. And then he, he, they both of them look at you. Or wrestling in his head. If he gives him his real name, <laughs> Because that name kind of carries weight. <laughs> it could, yep. <laughs> would we have talked about this before? I don't know. There's a lot of pressure on me right now. <laughs> nope. Yeah, I think we would have. Probably, yeah. probably not. I, don't. I, didn't, I didn't know they were going to pull out a book and ask you to you know, denote who you are. So, no. This is all. <laughs> I think, I'm watching I think this Berg happen in real starts, time. I think Berg starts, or, or, uh, Berg starts to say, um, you know, I'm Berg. <laughs> right, right. So she, she's like, "Sorry, Bert, Bert, Bert." Make a deception check. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Berg, you know, he wouldn't have thought of that. He's just like, "Well, nice." Until uh, let's see, it got to be a nine, Max. I got a negative two, JP. I had a negative two, man. You're gonna do great. I'm expecting performance. <laughs> Of a life. See? Boom. Yeah. So you, you're like, so she's like, Bert? And you, you nod and, sorry, what was it? What did you say? She's like, sorry, Bert? Yes. Bert. Oh, that's so, that's so funny. My, my son's name is also Bert. <laughs> and she turns and, and so the, the scribe like writes down like Bert and, uh, and, and she's like, who are your, who are your friends? Um, Berg motions to uh to Maharib like I don't fucking know. <laughs> like, you say a name. Like his face is calm and cool and collected until he looks at Maharib like I've like heard the conversation <laughs> up till now, Adam. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. So I know, I know that yep. they're asking for Yeah, you're names. right there. Okay. Uh let me think of a name, because he would use a name, but it's important to him, so I gotta think of a uh I think I now I need a fucking name for Ramus too, right? Because they motion towards him as mm -hmm. well. They say friends. Yeah, they're like, who who are your friends? Uh hold on. I actually was not prepared for this. I thought they were only gonna ask for <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I mean he's pulling out he's pulling out a uh, big old book, right? He's gonna Okay. Uh, I I look at him and say, um, or look at her rather and say, uh, my name is Kabir and this man on my shoulder is, <laughs> and he thinks about it for a second. Uh, Ramus has never said any other names. So we'll just say that his name is uh I'm trying. <laughs> we'll just say his name is. Uh, I am Kabir, and this is Brian. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Let's go simple. Okay. All right. Cousin of Doug. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. I don't know. I don't know where all these weird, these weird like Earth names are just showing up in the game now. We got Doug and are. Brian. Yeah, but you know what? These yeah. Earth names in this world are exotic and weird sounding. It's my friend Vanessa. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So, Ramus. All right. Good. Uh, so, so the 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 clerk like writes it writes it down, uh, and uh, and she uh, she says. Um, uh, and um, do you have an offering for the temple, or do you come with empty hands? I'm, I look towards Berg. I think I look towards Berg and say, Master?
we offer to help in the cause here if we receive help for him. We're healthy. That one. Very strong. <laughs> well, the two of you look it. And if this one in good health is half as strong as you two look, then we can always use some more muscle around here. Though things have been a bit quiet lately, which is nice. Mm, and she like kind of gives you a look. I uh, can see no reason to keep you out. She kind of like looks to see if you have weapons and stuff. And, uh, and she says, um, now th this place, it's a bit different than maybe you expect. Your weapons, they're yours. But what you do with them is your responsibility. Everyone within these walls is responsible for their own actions. Heaven's eyes don't fall on us down here. And so your mistakes, they're your own. Prayer is forbidden, as is all magic, unless you have a writ allowing it. But otherwise, do as you please. If you harm anyone, expect reprisals. But if anyone tries to hurt you, do to them what you wish. If you want your friend healed, she looks back at the, at the temple. Um, I will try to send someone. Do you have camping equipment? You have tents. You have bedrolls? Or will you need to stay here in the monastery? There may yet be room for you. We have enough if needed, but if there's room, good too. <laughs> All right, Bert. Well, the day is the stay. The day is still relatively young. We've got a few hours of sunlight left. Come inside. Have a look around. I'll find someone to help you out. I'm almost done with my shift. Fair enough. Thank you. And she uh, she turns and points through the archway, this, this enormous gate. And you can see that the, the next immediate section within the gate is a big open area of... Um, like statuary. I think there, there are statues and some ponds and like long winding paths where you can walk and, and take a look at all the statues. Uh, there seems off to one side in this open area to be like um, a fence, a uh, fenced off like camp. Um, and then there's the main hall, the hall of worship. And behind that, the central plaza in which all of the other buildings are, are contained. And she points, and you can only kind of make out the top of, uh, of uh, a couple of buildings off to, uh, to one side, to the east. And, uh, and she says, um, you're permitted to go wherever you wish, save those two, the inner sanctum and the benefactor's manor. They're off limits. You can go to the Hall of Mirrors if you like, but it's, it's still dangerous. So you go at your own risk. But your life is your own. And she steps Bert. aside. Bert nods. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, goes where she uh, pointed. Okay. Yep. All right. So as you go, yeah, as you go in, she turns to, uh, she turns to one of the other uh, soldiers uh, and, uh, and she says, um, uh, go, go to the school, see if you can fetch a healer for that one. And, uh, and he like salutes her. He's like, yes, ma'am. And he, he runs off. Uh, and as you enter the place, 
It from the outside it looks like a temple, but from the inside it looks like a temple that's been repurposed as a military camp. Uh, you see a bunch more of these black lacquer armored um, soldiers performing like spear drills uh, out in an open area. So you hear the kind of like ha huh! and the like clattering of armor as they practice their their spear moves. Uh, you can see groups of other travelers who have been let in uh, either sitting around um, like a fire or they have like a little uh, their own little like rice field that they're setting up so you can see them kind of planting some late season rice um there's a um uh a plume of steam rising from from some building off to one side and uh yeah and it looks like on the inside there's like work um details fixing and like patching the walls where they were damaged in the siege uh, so where do you go? You walk in, you're standing in the statuary garden, uh, and and despite the fact that this place was relatively recently a, like a battlefield, uh, there's there's a sort of peace once you reach the inside of the of the archway. Once you walk into the temple grounds, um, yeah, <clears throat> where the two of you you you're you're alone in the sense that there's nobody like kind of within earshot. There are people like moving around. I think if we're mm -hmm. far enough from. Um... Yeah, out of earshot and far enough from like kind of the, the guard line, as it were, the TSA line, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll just get right next to, to Bert and, and say, you handled that well. Thank you. I'm not the best with plans or words, but I get by sometimes. Hmm. Perhaps you've never been given the chance. Now you have. Yeah. With that one. <clears throat> points at Ramus. No yeah. need for me to talk. Yes, that, that does make sense. I suppose we should head for the temple. See if they could help him out. Or at least tell us what's wrong. I think we should yeah. keep his name to ourselves and also how he came to be in this state. The whole mirror issue. Then, what do we say? They'll want to know. Hmm. Perhaps we were lost in the forest. He collapsed. We're not sure what's wrong. Hmm. Do you want to talk? If you would like another chance, here's one. Doesn't matter. I never want to be leader or spokes. Spokes talk guy. Hmm. Fair enough. I'll do the talking then once we reach the temple. I kind of like look up. Uh, what time of day is it? It's like uh, mid afternoon. Okay. Well, we should hurry. We'll find camp later. I think I start like walking in stride towards the temple. Ramus on yeah. side. Okay. On shoulder. Sounds good. Okay. So you you head for the uh, you head for the temple. Uh, the temple itself is. Uh, it's staggered. So there's like a raised platform with a set of stairs. And then on that raised platform, there are like open areas where the, the guards and the, the various like soldiers of this place have set up like tents and stuff. And there's another raised platform with the outer area of the temple. And then the last platform is the temple itself, which is a multi-story kind of massive hall. Uh, for for worship, uh, up top the the stone is carved to let the sun through, and so casts shadows in um, sort of mandala patterns on the ground. And the the mandala turns basically the whole place is a big sundial. So as the sun moves, the mandala turns and kind of illustrates the um, the movement of a human soul through uh, through the arcana. And so its front doors uh, they are they are open. And you can hear uh, inside, you can hear like the grunts and shouting of uh, a crew of people at work. Um, people like uh, one, one person's voice higher than the others shouting to the group. Uh, so you hear like, secure that rope. All right, now, now you pull. And uh, you can hear like they're doing, there's a project going on of some kind inside. 
Um, and uh, yeah, and outside uh, there are uh, there are soldiers like, standing and talking, some on duty, some off. And uh, you get a couple of glances, but no, nobody like stops you or talks to you or anything. Okay. Um, I think before we like ascend to the temple or, or to where we can kind of see it in its full uh, glory. I, uh, yeah, if we can get into it, yeah. Yeah, I stop and, and kind of like put my hand in front of Berg and just say, I, I feel bad that Ramus is not able to see this. And Yota as well. They were the ones that we're coming here for. To me, this is just a rune to them. It is history. Mm. I don't know how Ramus would feel about being here in his current state. Um, <laughs> he did seem quite well, angry. Be joyful or angry. Memories are weird that way. You don't know until they pop up how you feel. I wonder if he'll know if he wakes up inside the temple where he is. And perhaps we should hide that from him. He might react in a way that would not benefit us in such a situation. Odd to say, blameless with his soul back means his emotions will come forth more. Hmm. Not sure. Maybe let him ease into it. Well, we'll have to see. We have no other options. Here we go. I start to like ascend the temple. Okay. Yeah. So as you get close to the uh, to the temple doors, uh, a soldier uh, steps in the way. He puts his hands up uh, and stops you. Like he he, he steps in the way. Uh, do you say anything? This is still he's still a few paces away. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll just say outright like we were told to bring our friend here. Is that going to be a problem? Uh, we're just following what the gate guard said. <laughs> He, he nods and he says, no, 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 it's just not, it's not safe. Just wait a moment. You, you can come in and watch if you want, but you have to stay back. We don't want anyone getting crushed. Come on. And he turns and he, he like walks inside. And just inside the door, as you get in, your eyes adjust to the shadow. The inside of this place is almost like a prism. So the sun comes in through the window, and it reflects off of all of these brass panels they have around the inside of the temple, and is redirected onto the floor. And in the center of the in the center of the room, there is an enormous statue, like maybe I don't know, ten, fifteen feet off the uh, like fifteen feet tall, but it's on a pillar another 10 feet up and it's of a sort of beatific looking like monk with a, a an aura like a halo behind him of the sun and he's got ropes wrapped around his arms and uh scattered on the floor are bits of rock and sledgehammers and various like stone working tools and you see a crew of uh mostly like kind of peasant dress like folk and they're holding the ropes and this foreman is is shouting uh like all right everyone on one and he's like three two and they start pulling and you hear groaning and like there's a cracking sound as the statue this enormous ancient statue uh, uh of a, a saint of the sun topples over and smashes on the floor with a great terrible noise uh so it, it falls and shatters throwing pieces of rock everywhere and uh, a cheer goes up from the from the crew as it as it crashes to the ground and there's a lot of back slapping and hugging and like yeah we did it and the soldier is smiling and nodding and he, he turns to you and he uh, and he says you see if you just wandered in here he points to the pile of rubble you could be under there and then where would you be well you'd be dead <laughs> i guess Anyway, it should be safe now. I think they're done for the day. Yeah, I'd look over at Bert. Look back. Thank you. I appreciate that. Can you tell us where to find the priest or who we should take this person? Uh, sorry, he, la a friend he laughs. 
He laughs and he says, priest. <laughs> oh, friend. There are no priests here. <laughs> I am but if here. you have a sick friend, Dr. Tanawat will find his way to you. You can lay him on one of the benches. There are plenty of places to sit here now. Very well. I appreciate that. Do you need anything? You look like you've been traveling a while here. And he, he takes um, uh, like a leather uh, wineskin off of his belt and he, he hands it to you. <laughs> Mahari like looks down at the wine and thinks like, man, if only Yoda were here right now. <laughs> 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 I am okay. Thank you. I will find some water somewhere nearby. And he, he, he just like holds it. He's like, but I, I have water for you here now. <laughs> I, I don't need anything for it. I just, well, the two of you, you look tired and carrying a man like that. But if you don't want it, it's fine. <laughs> you live your life. And, uh, and he says, uh, anyway, enjoy the shade. And he just gestures to one of the stone benches and, uh, and turns and goes back to where he was. Okay. Yeah, I turn and this is not what I was expecting. They're nice. It's very... <laughs> I don't know what to think, but he said a doctor would find us, so I suppose we'll wait. I, like, yeah. uh, throw Ramus off my shoulder onto the bench. Okay. Yeah, you set him down on the bench. Yeah, there are a couple of uh, groups of workers, like, that sit down to have a drink and, like, you know, talk and joke and laugh. A couple of them light pipes and, like, they're, they're kind of, like, relaxing after, uh, after a, a hard day's work of uh, blaspheming a temple. Um, but the, the general atmosphere is, uh, like, one of, like, accomplishment as they sit down. So you, you sit down to rest on the bench and we, we cut over to, uh, to Yota Zo. So, uh, Yota, you and your, uh, your present friends arrive in sight of the temple. Uh, you see for the first time in decades its stone facade. You see the the arches that uh, that allow entry into the temple grounds, and your mind kind of wanders through the last time you were here. You remember the <laughs> sort of verdant ponds with the the koi that swam in the summer heat. You remember uh, all of the places as a child you were told never to go. Right to stay away from stay away from the dormitories. Don't bother the monks. You know, stay here with with your family in our in our house, except for rituals. Then you can go into the main hall. Um, and uh, you see at a at a distance the um, the tower, the the main kind of structure in the back with the the sparkling glass. And it, at from this distance, it looks almost like a second sun. It's like glittering in the sky, and somehow seems to amplify and magnify the sun's the sun's light. Um, and for you at this this very moment, maybe it it feels a bit like you get a bit of a headache looking at it, right? It's very bright and it reminds you how hot it is out here. You, you flick mm -hmm. an ear to like get some mosquitoes away from you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, and, yeah. Uh, prosperous and rabbit, made, prosperous rabbit the... comes up, he comes up beside you and he says, well, there it is. I raise my trunk to like shade my eyes. Mm -hmm. Look up at it. Oh, <sighs> Well, it's it's good to see some things don't change, given the time. It's as bright and obnoxious as I remember it. <laughs> you you hear at a great distance, uh, echoing over the f the flattened sort of plain between you and the temple. You hear a crash, uh, as if a great quantity of stone had just been dropped from a high height and uh uh prosperous rabbit jumps a little and he's like oh <laughs> i i thought the siege was over <laughs> mm, must be renovating yes uh i'd imagine so i uh, seen a few mm, i wouldn't necessarily call them kingdoms but places that have been taken over by other forces. They always do the redecorating after they've taken place of the previous rulers. I'd assume that there's art and statues and architecture that they're tearing down to put up in their own image. If I <laughs> move into my brother's house, I don't need the ugly painting of his wife on the wall, do I? 
my house now. Very, very true, but um, I don't know if I moved into a place that had a, say, a beautiful, ornate staircase. I might leave it there if it goes with the house as well as it does. Well, that's beside the point. I actually wanted to ask you about uh, the siege. How uh, <laughs> how did it go? I wasn't there. I didn't see it. But it looks well, like no, they... I uh, didn't assume you were a soldier. And he, he looks and he says, you can see plain as I can. One side lost, the other won. Right, but was there a lot of uh, prisoners, um, people being bought and sold into slavery or servitude or anything of that Shakes. nature? Certain races Shake, rounded yeah, up or anything? So he's, he's shaking his head while you're talking, and he says, no, 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 that's, that's something, mm, something that has changed. The king of Black River is, says no man is to be a slave. Never again. Every man is to live his life in his own way. No prisoners either. Mm. There are... He kind of like, he's trying to think of the word for it. He's like, there are uh, some who decided to change sides and who need to be re-educated. But otherwise, no prisons, no prisoners. Not anymore. Mm. Mm. What about the Arcana? <laughs> what about that, them? Are they being thrown out along with the statues and the temples and the like? You can't throw out something that doesn't exist. I used to pray and every I just day of my life. And instinctually, you see Yota look around like, that's some bold ass shit. And then uh -huh, he realizes, like, it sure is. that's the new order around here, so I don't have to look around. Like, everyone's yeah. falling in that particular line. So I look around a little yeah. bit just instinctually and go, so that's no longer a punishable offense to say it or think it, or in fact, it's encouraged and a part of the new uh, the new order of things. He shrugs and he says, uh, I don't have anything personally against the priests or heaven, <laughs> but uh, I tell you this, I prayed for gold, I prayed for riches and mercy, I prayed for beautiful lovers. Every day of my life, I got a farm, I got rice, I got a bad back and a nagging husband, I got more kids than I can remember, and... <laughs> I love all of them, but some of them are little nightmares. Uh, the Arcana never listened to me. So I think the only right thing to do is conclude that they just don't exist. Because if they're mm. as good as everyone says, heaven would have given me something by now, don't you think? Well, it could be argued that you weren't uh, pious enough, devout enough. I'm sure that's what the the men of the priest, men and women of the priesthood, would have said. They give ah, them fuck, magic fuck to you. That. And he, he just like <laughs> shakes his hands and he's like, "Fuck all that. I wasted far too long playing heaven's little game. I'm done. The king of Black Rivers came to my village and made us all a promise. Anyone who wanted to stay and work the fields, they'd be protected, taken care of." Even food. Their lives are better now. Anyone who didn't, they were free to leave. So we left. And now, he gestures, now we'll find our own fortune. Here. This grave where the gods died. A better life is waiting. One that matters now, not tomorrow. Mm. Very uh, interesting. Points of view here. Um, 
So uh, is it just the arcana or is it all of it? The primordials, the old gods of fire and thunder. Is everything gone? He's, all of it. He, he squints at you and he's like, what? <laughs> Nobody worships them. Nobody but fool savages that live in the hills. No. <laughs> if you want to worship your shoe, go ahead. It's not going to answer your prayers any more than a firewood or a thundercloud. <laughs> and he looks and then he looks down. He looks down and he, he realizes like you don't you don't wear shoes, right? Right. <laughs> he looks down and he realizes you're not wearing shoes. He looks back at you and he says, See? Just like the gods. No shoes. <sighs> Wait a minute, I had them. Where did they go? <laughs> they were around here. So did you steal my shoes? He shakes his head and he, <laughs> he just laughs and kind of walks off. And so, so we, we kind of like pull back and, and the, we can see this little, this little camp outside where, uh, you know, it's getting late. And so he, he's pulled the cart off to one side of the road. You're outside the walls of the temple and there are a few other groups of people, um, most of whom look to share most of their qualities with, with these guys, right? Like they are of the court of swords and they're, um, you know, peasants or, or farmers or whatever who have, like, left their home to come here on a pilgrimage. Um, and, uh, yeah, and so, so they, they set up the tent and, uh, the, you know, the kids help kind of get the, the area, like, flattened out and, um, uh, and Prosperous, Prosperous Rabbit and, and his husband kind of, like, they just they get squared away. Uh, what do you do while that's happening? Are you going to help or are you going to go and investigate, kind of go see what else is going on? What do you think? Mm. All right. Give me my two choices again so I can have a clear idea. Of... <laughs> yeah, I mean you can you can stay you can stay with them to mm -hmm. uh to help like set up. Or right. you can go and, and walk around a little and like just scope out the scope out the camp. Mm. I better stay with them. I better just stay with them and, and, and help them out because they got me this far. They pulled me out of the mud and out of my fucking drunk funk. So <laughs> okay. I better help them. I, 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 I owe them something. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. So you, uh, you stay and, and help them set up and the kids teach you the little, like making work fun song that their parents taught them to like help them not get bored <laughs> yep. doing work. And like, you know, and they, they get you to like participate in their, uh, their little, their little game. Uh, and then, uh, meanwhile, inside, um, Ramus, uh, Berg and Maharib, uh, you are approached by, uh, someone who you can see them him walking over. Uh, he looks like, uh, he's, he's fairer skinned than everyone else you've seen here. Um, probably like an aristocrat or something where he didn't have to spend a lot of time out in a field. Okay. So paler skin, more delicate features. Uh, he has a pair of, uh, lenses, like glasses on his, on the end of his nose. Um, he's, he's like a little bit muddy, like maybe from the knees down and he's wearing kind of a similar looking outfit minus the armor, uh, for the soldiers. And he has a, a satchel, uh, over his shoulder. Uh, and he's, he's walking up towards you and he's got kind of a, not a scowl, but like a concerned face uh, as he as he approaches. Okay, uh, I'll stand up as he gets closer to like. Okay. Acknowledge that I see him approaching. <laughs> he he watches you stand up, and it seems to surprise him that it takes so long. That he's like, "Cool, a normal person would be standing like would be done, <laughs> but you just keep going." <laughs> and uh, and he, he like looks up, kind of blinks, and uh, and he looks over at at Berg. Uh, and he says, um, one of the soldiers said that somebody was hurt. And it's obviously neither of you. And he looks at, at Aramis and he says, is he just sleeping or is he unconscious? How long has he been like this? Hmm. It's been several days. He fell unconscious when we were in the forest. Several days? Oh, goodness. Ah, out of the way. And he like pushes the two of you uh, aside. Yeah, I side, side eye. Bert, uh, <laughs> and, and kind of like step back a little bit. Uh, and he, he, he shakes his head and he says, being unconscious like this for several days, that's going to cause lasting damage. I hope he wasn't a scholar or anything. I hope he is okay as well. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I said. I hope he's okay. 
and he ugh, throws his bag on the floor and he, he opens it and he he takes out um, a lead weight on a on a long uh, piece of um, chain and he hangs it over Ramus's face and he watches it and he like kind of scratches his chin like nothing happens and he's like hmm hmm and he's making noises as if he's like something is happening and he like puts it away and he he takes out uh, a little uh, paper packet that he opens up and he like blows some like powder on Ramus's face and he like looks at it and he gnaws. He's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and he picks Ramus's arm up and lets it go. And Ramus's arm flops on the ground. He's like, mm, mm. And he's like, just like examining, uh, examining Ramus. Yeah. After like the fourth or fifth <laughs> thing, whatever it is, whatever the, the practice that he's doing, I, can you, is he okay? Can you tell us anything yet? I, do not know these practices he, that you are doing. He looks over at you and he says, this is going to sound crazy, but <laughs> you could see him being like, this is insane to even say it. He says, has this man recently had something happen soul wise? <laughs> <laughs> I look towards Berg and look back. Uh, could you be more specific? <laughs> well, he says, uh, he's like, well, I, I mean, the tests, and he points, he's like, it's all, it's all a little complicated. And, and I don't mean to insult either of the two of you, but you look like fighters, not thinkers. Yeah, but he, he seems like a newborn babe. The, his soul is uh, soft. Like a, like a child's skull. Uh, he's vulnerable. They're weak. Like a stepped-on turtle. And then, obviously, he was exposed to some kind of spiritual shock because he's just withdrawn in on himself. You know those little gray bugs that when you startle them, they curl up into a ball? Your, your friend here is a, a pill bug. Mm. I mean, me metaphorically. Uh, I mean, not he's not actually a bug. You can see that. Yes. How do we shock him awake no 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 that'll only make it worse he'll just invert altogether and then who knows what'll happen maybe he'll rip a hole in time and space and kill us all no we can't apply any further spiritual shock we have to take care of him be gentle give it time he'll unfurl like a like a wrinkly flag I mean, physically, he's fine. I mean, you can see, despite the hideousness in the face region. Yeah. Besides all of that, he's he's he hasn't been stabbed or dropped off of anything high. It looks like you managed to get him here without banging his head too many times. So, just find somewhere safe, and uh, and he he takes out um a uh. A metal, a little metal, like a ball with a like little feet on the bottom, um, and he like a little tripod. And he opens it, and in it there is a gritty looking, like cone of something. And he holds it in front of you, and he says, "Find somewhere like this, set it near him." Do either of you play a musical instrument? Oh, I do not. Bert, do you? I've never asked you this before. <laughs> it's never come up. Do. And he nods and he says, Good, good. Light the incense. Maybe play him a song or two. Just be gentle with the man and he'll unfold. And if he doesn't, in another day or so, come and find me. We'll see about options. Thank you. I. What do we, do we pay you? Uh, I'm new here. We are new here. If you want to, you can. Or you could owe me a favor. Mm. I do not like favors owed. One second. That's good. Keep the debt down. Uh, 
Fuck, Ramus doesn't have any money. I was going to reach into Ramus's pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Ramus yeah. is poor. Uh, just give him one of the rings you got. Go ahead. That's more than enough. They're man. just they're just regular rings. Whatever. My, totally none of them. I have 50 deal. gold in my pocket. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Then I'll reach into Ramus's pockets and pull out 25 gold. Okay. And, and you uh, you give it to Reaching him. in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, we it's carried your fucking somewhere. body here because you looked at a dumb mirror. So. I don't even want to hear it. I don't even yeah, want to hear it. We're like, we're not looking listen bastard. <laughs> There's gold somewhere in Ramus's pockets, real, real deep. Just d- dig around in there. You'll find it eventually. Yeah. Let's just keep keep looking for it. Yeah. So I pull um, out 25 gold. Okay. So you, you take it. Well, this. Yeah, he he takes it. it. Are we square? Yeah. He uh he nods uh, and he says, uh, mm, "This will cover this visit and another if you need it, and if you don't, well." Now I owe you one, but I'll keep the gold. And he looks at it again, and, and we can see that it's minted. Like, this is foreign gold, right? Because you, yeah. you traveled a long way, and this is gold from, from like, the Court of Wands. And, uh, and he's like, uh, you boys came a long way. Mm. Or else you do trade with someone who did. Yes. Can the extra gold, perhaps, make it so that this conversation never occurred, rather than you owe us? Make a persuasion check. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, I will use my inspiration on this. Hey, 16. Didn't really need it. 16? Okay. So, uh, he nods. Yeah. All right. I won't tell anyone. Just keep your friend hidden. Right now, he just looks like someone who's hurt. But, well... People like to gossip. I understand. Thank you. And good luck with everything happening here. And he kind of blinks at you over his glasses. He's like, well, luck doesn't have anything to do with it. It's the, it's the fucking point, isn't it? <sighs> and he <laughs> just like walks off with his bag of stuff. <laughs> Look over at Bert. Very strange man. But we have a remedy, so. Not like we're normal. Mm. Fair enough. Let's go make a <laughs> camp somewhere. We need to put Ramus next to this orb. And I suppose you have some musical roles to play in this. <laughs> <laughs> I like swing Ramus on top or sorry Brian over my shoulder and uh, start walking come on Brian yeah. okay. Brian and Brian. <laughs> yeah. that's great Rolls to play in this you son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> so why uh, yeah why don't we why don't we take a break there and yeah, do that and that we'll, uh, we'll mm-hmm. catch up after alright well, cool alright we're gonna take a break so I got two hours left to go here on episode one of two or 102, rather, with the adventures of Bert, Kabir, <laughs> Brian, Brian, and Yota. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> More Court of Swords right after this. We'll see you guys in just a bit. <laughs> 